Hello viewers. Welcome to our ongoing video lesson transmissions. We are happy that you have been tuned in from the time that we started. And I wish you a pleasant viewing. In our lesson today, we want to have a recap of what we did last time in poetry paper one we had looked at the testing of poetry in english paper one and we looked at the sound devices and their importance just two more questions that is commonly asked before we go to today's lesson which is the testing of oral literature in paper one a topic that is a must for form threes and form fours. Welcome. A recap of last week's lesson about the testing of poetry. There is that commonly question that is asked, and I feel indebted to look at that question before I go to oral literature. There is this common question. Imagine you are to perform the above poem. How would you prepare this question ranges between three to five marks? Let us imagine that the question has two has four marks. In my question, I'm going to look at this. You are to perform the above poem. How would you prepare for the same? One basic question that we need to ask ourselves in this type of questions in paper one Is this are we doing it before are we doing it during because the answers are going to vary so this question presupposes that we are doing it before so this is before how do we prepare before number one internalize the poem internalize I wish to caution students against such answer as memorize in performance we do not have anything like memorizing you have to internalize getting the words their meanings and all that is associated with it a very important answer Number two, practice on non-verbal cues. The poem, you have internalized it, then you have to practice on non-verbal cues. The gestures that you are going to use the facial expressions you are going to use, the body movements that you are going to use, tone of variation that you are going to use, including dramatic pause. Number three, practice on pronunciation
and articulation. Part of performance in a poem has to do with the pronunciation. And when you talk about pronunciation, we are talking about a particular word. If it is the story about the hare and the tortoise, how do we pronounce the word tortoise? Is it tortoise? Is it tortoise? That is pronunciation. When we talk about articulation, how do we pronounce individual sounds in a word? So pronunciation has to do with the word. Articulation has to do with the sounds in that particular word. Number four, you have internalized. You know the nonverbal cues. You have the right pronunciation. And then you have the right articulation. Then prepare on the costumes and props. Costumes is that thing that we are going to wear. The dresses, the headgear, and all that. Props are those things that you are going to use on stage. If it is a spear, if it is a gun, if it is a, a pot, those are props. Number five, which is normally the last stage, is gather... Gather a mock audience and rehearse before it. A mock audience composes of selected threads that are going to critically and positively advise you on how you are going to do a real performance. And that is why it is called mock. It is just before the real performance. Because you have internalized the poem, you know the verbal cues, the pronunciations and the articulation, you are with your costumes. So you are performing the way you would perform during a live performance. That is what we call a mock performance. Another commonly asked question How would you make How would you make the performance attractive to watch? Right now, I am teaching. How do I sustain your interest throughout the lesson? When you are performing a poem, how do we sustain the attention of the audience? Number one, audibility. Mm -hmm. 
this is you are able to be heard across the hall that is audibility audibility does not necessarily mean being loud but is that person able to hear what you are saying is that person able to hear what you are saying that is audibility number two meaningful eye contact maintain eye contact with the audience part of the meaning that comes out of your performance will be extracted from the many nonverbal cues that we are going to use and part of it is the facial expressions especially when you are performing a poem there is mood another one can be communicated by use of nonverbal uh, cues that is facial expression that is where you need to maintain meaningful eye contact with the audience relevant use relevant non-verbal use relevant non-verbal cues i want to emphasize on the word relevant not every non-verbal cue will be relevant some gestures can be offensive but there are those gestures that are universally accepted across cultures and races the relevant nonverbal cues number three <clears throat> effective articulation Effective articulation and pronunciation. I do not want to blabber this point because we had talked about it earlier on. The other one that is very important is uh, uh, observe tempo. Tempo means the speed of delivery if a poem is about morning the pace will be calculated if there is some joy the pace will be passed and that pace is what we call temple thank you we now come to our main topic today that is the testing of oral literature in paper one. My colleague, Mr. Nangwe, had taken the class through uh, oral literature in general, but I want to be specific as a person who is interested in answering KCSE questions. Preparing from this and also from four. Let us now contextualize the testing of oral literature in paper one. And the first one that we look at is the testing of a narrative. May I remind you, my dear students, that when a narrative is tested, in paper one it will be about performance it will be about performance when it is tested in paper two it is about literary techniques but in paper one is just about performance some commonly asked questions 
when a narrative is tested will include how would you prepare number A How would you prepare for the performance? Once again, two to three marks. Number one, internalize, just like a poem, internalize the narrative. Number two, prepare costumes. Number three, practice. on use of non-verbal lastly perform a mock presentation more is when you are preparing for a narrative, you are also preparing the same way you are going to prepare for a narrative. Internalize the narrative. Prepare relevant costumes and props. You have to practice on the use of nonverbal cues. You have to perform a mock presentation. Question number B. Question number B. How would you How would you prepare the audience in the performance of an oral narrative? Number one. Perform a relevant song. Please note my answer talks of a relevant song, not in a song. A song that is related to the narrative. During the performance, You noted that the audience was noisy, uneasy, and frequently. walked outside. What could have been the cause of this behavior? Very interesting question. During the performance, you noted, you have noted that the audience is noisy, the audience is uneasy, and the audience is frequently walking outside. Then we are being asked, what could have been the cause for this particular behavior? We can tackle two things at the same time. Indicators of inattentiveness. 
we have been given one is making noise that is one cause of inattentiveness making noise number two unnecessary movement we are calling it unnecessary because sometimes there would be need for you to go to the washrooms and that is necessary but other movements are unnecessary frequently looking outside that uh, outside becomes more interesting than what you are doing on stage others are going to knuckle their figures very loudly very loudly they are showing some disinterest then feet shuffling going to shuffle their feet they are causing a distraction because you are no longer delivering in what you are saying those are some of the signs of inattentiveness so the question asks what could have been the cause of the behavior and the reason is you are the one it has to do with the narrator what wrong has this person done a very interesting question this one is because if you use the word not lack of didn't the answer is wrong dear candidate so avoid negative avoid negative answers there is not lack of or didn't so we are focusing on what the narrator fails to do number one in audibility note i am not saying not audible i am saying in audibility you cannot be heard at all corners of the uh, venue number two failure to failure to maintain meaningful eye contact once again note this answer i am not writing did not maintain that is wrong answer lack of eye contact wrong answer we use the word failure to maintain meaningful eye contact a good performance is that performance where you are going to employ nonverbal cues that particular song let them participate you are narrating a story and then there is a song and then the song goes like this hula hula the animals went one by one hula hula let the audience join you in the performance of that song and then it will become very important audience involvement involves the use of a song as earlier demonstrated then the use of mimicry where you are imitating different animals if you are imitating about the hair the hair said come my friends we go to the drinking part and the elephant said, I am 
the leader here. That is the use of a mimicry. Number <coughs> next in the testing of an oral narrative, another commonly asked question. Yes. As the narrator, you have employed all the techniques But the audience is still inattentive. What could be the reason? Three marks. Yes, you are a very good narrator. You have done all that it takes to do a narration, but you still find that uh, the audience is not concentrating. Then the question is, what could be wrong? In most cases, the performer is the one who is supposed to to create and arouse interest. But sometimes the audience is also the problem. Number one, extreme extreme weather conditions could be a problem however much interest we arouse in the audience you are still going to see them dozing off this is as a result of extreme weather conditions and i'm using the word extreme weather conditions what i mean is extremely cold the place could be extremely cold, such that uh, in voluntarily, your body is doing other things to keep yourselves warm. And those other things are acting as a distraction. You know better in biology ways to keep warm, the involuntary ways that we do. All it is extremely hot. You've taken a lot of ugari. You are sweating. And there is some metabolism that is taking place. Definitely you are going to do so. And that one is going to kill the narration. So extreme weather condition could be a problem with the uh, audience. Number two, external distraction. external distraction sometimes you may not avoid this a donkey has just run into the compound at it <laughs> however much that one was interesting 
there will be some external distraction. Or there is a pack of dogs running into the compound. External distraction. Or even a madman could come in and then start looking at you through the windows. That is external distraction. Is going to create that uh, problem. And number three, sometimes it has to do with congestion. Congestion, <coughs> this brings fatigue and disinterest. You may want a situation where you are seated, you have your space, the place is well irated, and then you are enjoying the narration. But when there is congestion, discomfort comes in. People are sweating. And that one is no setting. And that one way is going to affect that kind of uh, distraction. So, viewers, we have been looking at the testing of uh, oral literature. And the first one we have been looking at is the testing of a narrative. Suppose, and I want you to suppose that number two, the testing of a riddle. Some of the questions that are asked in paper one about a riddle is basically about performance, once again. And a riddle can be tested in two very basic ways. Number one, what we need to know in a riddle are what we call the performance stages of a riddle. The six stages. Stages. A read is performed in stages. Number one. Stage number one, we call it the invitation stage. The invitation. This is when the performer invites the audience to the riddling session. We are going to use certain technical words here in a riddle. Let us be aware of somebody who is called a riddler. That is the one who is performing, also known as a, a, a charger. And then let us know about a respondent. Those are terms that we are going to use interchangeably. There are different ways depending on which kind of books that you are looking at. When you are looking at uh, invitation, one way will be 
I have a riddle. There is one way. Another way is I throw a riddle. Those terms are used. Number three, riddle, 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 three times. Stage number two is called acceptance. Stage number one is by a riddle or a charger. Stage number two is by a respondent. So as a, a riddle, when you come on stage, you say, I have a riddle. Then the respondent or respondents will say, let it come, let it come. Let it come, let it come, let it come, let it come, or we'll say, throw it, throw it, depending on the kind of book that you are using for revision. Stage number three. Stage number three is what we call the charge or the riddle. The charge or the riddle. Number four. You have invited, they have accepted. You have given the riddle. Then we shall come to the fourth stage. We call it the guesses. This is where the audience are, uh, the audience is attempting to give out their solution. And in a normal riddling process, the guesses could be one or two. Number five is called the prize. It becomes very interesting if the audience are unable to give the answer, then the reader will demand for a prize. Are the not candidates? When you are discussing this question, the prize should always be positive something that is going to be appreciated. The prize should be something of value, something that is going to be appreciated by the narrator or the, the riddler, the prize. And then stage number six is what we are referring to as the solution. Then the riddler will be able to give the solution to the riddle. And that is an entire riddling process. Let us try to apply. Please apply the following proverb. I have a friend who never abandons me. We have a, a sample proverb there. I have a friend who never abandons me. Then, stage number one, the invitation, 
that person will say, I have a friend. I have a riddle. Then the charger or the respondent, sorry, will say, let it come, let it come. So we are going to substitute this one too. Cherry jam. The cherry jam says, I have a riddle. Then, number two, number two, the respondent. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Then the other stage. We go back to the charger. Stage number three is the riddle itself. I have a friend. who never abandons me. I have a friend who never abandons me. Then the respondent We'll now give guesses here. And I guess there is where the technicality is. The kind of a guess must be related to this riddle. The kind of a guess must be related to the riddle. There must be that logicality. So the respondents will say, I have a friend. Then somebody will say, my spouse. Depending on who is giving out the, uh, the riddle, somebody will say, my spouse. If it is a husband, we say, my wife. If it is a, a wife, we'll say, my husband, my spouse. Then the charger. We say, no, the answer is not a spouse. Then the respondent will give a second guess. In most cases, the guesses should be two. The answer is legs. Then the charger I'm sorry. Not legs. Then the charger at this point will have to say, then give me a prize. We'll demand a prize. Then we shall come back to the respondent. We offer you you can give a prize. We offer you give a prize. A prize that will be relevant to 
the riddle. A house in section six. In Isri. And then the charger will come here. The charger. The answer is a shadow. There will be a very interesting question. The second way through which this question can be asked is that you shall have dashes, I have a riddle, then you are supposed to fill that dash. The challenger says, I have a friend who never abandons. And then that one will be a dash once again. And this one will be a dash when the challenger says, No, the answer is not a spouse. The respondent says, Challenger, I am sorry, not legs. Then give me applies. Then that one will be a dash once again. Then the charger will come here and say, The answer is a shadow. That is the second way through which a riddle can be tested. And once again, that's about the process. You may have other related uh, questions about a riddle. At least some of these questions would be imagine you are performing that riddle in front of an audience and then you found that the audience was not concentrating. What could have been wrong? So we go back to the same questions about performance. That is the beauty in some of the questions in English Paper 1 that we need to be familiar with, that these questions are literally the same. All that you need is to employ all your mental faculties when you are looking at these issues. So in our next transmission, we shall be looking at the testing of other genres, like the tongue twisters, the puns, among others. has been a very interesting lesson. Meet you next time.